Can everybody see the PowerPoint? Yep. Perfect. Yes. All right, so welcome to our December Quality Improvement Committee. My name is Kate Loza, in case anybody didn't know. Um, I'm a staff services analyst for mental health, um, as well as the member services resolutions officer. So I deal with grievances um, for the department. There we go. Um, so this meeting is being recorded. If you do not wish to be recorded, you may leave the meeting or just turn off your video. Um, the video will be posted to the MHSA YouTube channel as well as on the Lake County public website um, under behavioral health. So we're going to kick off, kick it off with grievances. Um, so thus far for this fiscal year, there have been five grievances. Three are related to medication services. Two of those are resolved. Um, the last one will be resolved by next week. Um, one was related to payment for the DUI program that has been resolved. And the final one is related to quality of care for SUDS treatment. Um, the two open grievances will be closed by next week. And all grievances um, are and have been completed within the 60 day mandated time frame. So I wanted to add this since we have a lot of people from other agencies that do um, share clients um, or work with people um, within LCBHS. A lot of people aren't uh, familiar about our grievances or complaints uh, procedures. Um, if you're out in the community and have contact with, you know, our crisis team or our meds team or anybody, um, and you want to facilitate a grievance for a client, or if you have any questions or concerns, you can always call me. Um, there's my name, my email address, and my direct number. Um, our grievance forms are located in both the LCBHS clinics, as well as on the County of Lake Behavioral Health Services webpage. You can also email me directly and I can fill one out for you or call me and I can fill one out for you. Um, and then grievances are resolved within 60 days of receipt. Any questions? So for our audits right now for compliance, um, the DMC SABG audit is happening currently and it's due January 13th. Uh, the, 21, the fiscal year 2021 and 21-22 corrective action plans are almost completed for our DMC SABG. And then our, e, for, that's all for SUD. And then for mental health, EQRO took place um, yesterday and we just finished up this morning. So we have a couple things to send to them, but other than that, it was a really good um, EQRO this year. Hey, yeah. I always forget what SABG stands for. Uh, substance abuse block grant, right? Is that correct? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Yay me for remembering. Okay. <clears throat> So our AOD certification, um, the biennial audit was conducted at the Lucerne Clinic on November 18th. Um, the certification report did get returned um, with three minor deficiency items, which included program code of conduct, admission agreement, and client rights. Um, our compliance team immediately began working on the corrective action plan, um, which was submitted on December 7th. And then two days later on the 9th, we received a letter stating that all deficiencies have been cleared. The way that we did that in our cap was to display the program code of conduct in the lobby, which is visible to clients and the general public. Um, we revised the consent to treatment form to include a list of services and addresses, as well as updated conditions of agreement. Um, and the client rights form, um, which is in draft process to include additional language on the right to take medications prescribed um, by a medical professional, um, and um, for and to be provided a copy of client's rights at admission. Um, the client's rights form will also be displayed in the lobby visible to clients and the general public. So for the DMCODS implementation, um, we've received a soft approval from DHCS for the DMCODS implementation plan. Uh, um, the SUDS team met with DHCS on December 8th to discuss the final implementation plan submittal. Um, and then our deputy director, April Gambra, um, well, that was yesterday, so most likely had the proposed edits to partnership. 
Um, and then we are expecting to receive them back from partnership by December 16th, which is tomorrow, to meet the December 19th submission date uh, to DHCS. Not sure if April's here. No. Okay. So for the uh, specialty mental health implementation plan, it's something that's required by DHCS. Um, it basically is a document that compiles all of our mental health policies and sets out what our plan for mental health services is uh, for the fiscal year. We are required to update the plan annually and incorporate any changes to our mental health policies. We do anticipate some significant changes in uh, th this coming fiscal year um, for the inclusion of CalAIM, um, but primarily the, the changes this time um, were that we updated the outpatient timeliness standards to be current and consistent throughout. We clarified some of the grievance appeal processes, added the hospital selection criteria, corrected the array of services section to reflect our new system and added required language to the concurrent review section. I believe that everybody that got an invite to this meeting did get a copy of the draft um, implementation pro implementation plan, excuse me. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to ask. If you think of anything later, we're happy to, to respond to anything. Also, if you don't mind, um, Kate, uh, my name is Vanessa Mayer. I'm the compliance program manager. This was my item uh, for this agenda. And I just wanted to let you know that this is our opportunity now to incorporate any of your feedback. So if you have any concerns or you have any suggestions, um, we would like to finalize this plan by the end of the year. So if you could uh, shoot those via email, I'll leave my uh, email address in the chat, or you can send it to Kate and Kate will make sure it gets to me. Thank you. Um, so our performance outcome measures, we're currently working on creating a performance improvement project or a PIP that incorporates the HEDIS measures, which is healthcare effectiveness data information set. Um, and those measures are for follow-up after emergency department visit for mental health, um, the same for substance use disorder, and the same for pharmacotherapy for opioid use disorder. Um, we're currently collaborating with our care coordination community leaders to identify the root causes and barriers that exist in order to, you know, elevate and improve the care client's experience with us after they visit the ER. The, just in case nobody knows, the overall goal from DHCS is to get our numbers up eventually to 90% um, success rate with that follow-up just to um, ensure that we're doing everything we can to make sure that um, people are, have access to services after these events. And just for clarity, what are the, uh, the measures, the follow-up measures? What do you mean? Seven and 30 days. For oh, I'm sorry. Yes, there's seven and 30 days. Um, and then for the pharmacotherapy for opioid use, it's um, after what, like 180 days or something like that. That's correct. Um, and right now, the, the information that we got um, from DHCS compares um, our county to the national average, as well as California as a whole. Um, for the follow-up after um, ED visit for mental illness, we are above um, California and I believe also above the national, but for the other two, we're a little low. Um, so we're definitely working on figuring out the root causes and, and mitigating those barriers that exist so we can bring those um, numbers up. And finally, our electronic health record, we're getting a new one um, and right now we're kind of in the, I don't know, not with testing into, you know, migration stage. Um, since the last meeting, we've provided state reporting data info to CalMESA for CalOMS and CSI, um, provided categories for scan documents. Um, December 22nd is a tentative lockdown of the EHR date for data migration. Um, and then right now they're looking to copy the quality assurance environment um, with our client data to the train environment at the end of um, round two to allow billing testing via smart care. The date is to be determined. Um, and then they 
um, our BSAs provided procedure code linkages to the unit and subunit. So basically, they're just kind of building on um, getting everything moved over to the new H EHR system so we can start testing it and learning and um, all of that. Does anybody have any questions? Okay. And is there anything um, today that you would want to see at the next meeting? Um, you can let me know now or you can email me and let me know um, the, uh, let's see. The next QIC, we don't have any 2023 dates yet, um, so we'll probably figure those out in January and send out a, um, a calendar so that you know. Um, and if you have any questions or comments, you can feel free to ask them now or send me an email or give me a call. Um, we can definitely answer those questions. Everyone good? <laughs> All right, well, that is the uh, end of QIC. I appreciate you guys coming and, you know, LCBHS wishes you all a really happy and healthy holiday season. And we look forward to seeing you again in the new year for the next QIC. Thank you, Kate. You're Thank welcome. you. Have a great day. Bye.